if you had a question. Yeah, do you have any talks scheduled uh, this coming week, or when are you going to talk with uh, all the white people about the I mean, I've been in contact with Eric. Uh, you know, first step was to find out exactly how long Canelo was suspended for. You know, that was clarified by the Nevada Commission. Uh, there seems to be a lot of interest on their side. Uh, naturally, there's interest on our side. We have uh, Dan Beckerman here, the uh, head honcho of uh, all the AEG properties, including StubHub Center, including Staples Center, including T-Mobile, uh, the O2, uh, the list goes on and on. Just one quick follow-up for Abel. Abel, you were pretty hard on Canelo about his retreating style in the, in the fight in September. What do you, how do you think he'll be perceived if he tries to wiggle away from a, a rematch with Gennady in September by his fan base? Just the fact that he's uh, he still has failed to to uh, to enroll in any kind of program to be tested. That just I think that just puts that far that fight so much farther away. Um, I think that they're both. If it happens, they're both in in a, in a state of mind that they're both mad at each other for the things that have been said. And I think that they're going to go at each other. It's, it's going to be a much much better, uh, a more attractive fight for the fans. But I think he he needs to do his part as Gennady is doing his part, and that is with the testing. Uh, at least try to prove to the, to the public and to, to, to the journalists that, he, that he's making an effort to show us that he's clean. Is that a condition for you to even sit down with him at the table for him to involve the bottom? Well, it, it's, it's not, that's not my, my call. That would be, be Gennady's call, but that's why when uh, Dan asked about, or Kevin or whoever was, asked about the 10%, that's the reason that that comment came out it was because Canelo's side is not doing enough right, to right. try to make the fight. Right, but my question is, if you're going to sit down and negotiate, would that be a condition? That, Norm, that, that would be absolutely a condition. Um, okay. Gennady's been Vada testing now for since February, beginning of February. He's never failed the test. Um, you know, if we're negotiating, uh, Canelo's going to test and, and uh, Gennady's going to continue so to test. Step one. Uh, absolutely, and and I do have to say that uh, Eric said that that wouldn't be an issue. So if we signed the agreement, then uh, Kyle is going to test. You know, this last test was done earlier than than the first fight. Uh, you know, so that's something that uh, Abel insisted on, uh, even for this fight. You know, it would have been an unfair advantage. Gennady's doing all these this testing, proving he's a clean athlete, and then you come in with a replacement opponent on short notice. Who knows? they're doing and, and that's going to be something that uh, he gave um, uh, you know he gave an unfair advantage or actually you know the Danny Jacobs fight was an unfair advantage due to weight but uh, there's no reason to put a champion like Gennady who follows all the rules into a situation where there is an unfair advantage and frankly testing these days uh, is 100 percent necessary when you have a fight on this scale at this magnitude whether you're in Mexico training, whether you're in Big Bear training, wherever you're training, you have to be responsible for whatever goes in your body. Can you imagine, and Abel made a huge, uh, great point, can you imagine what Gennady's punching power, had he tested positive? Can you imagine the outcry that would be of uh, what happened? How did it get in the system? And uh, Gennady says he eats steak all the time up in, <laughs> up in Big Bear, California. In fact, Mexican steak. There's, uh, there's, uh, there's a hacienda, a restaurant called the Hacienda, right across the street from Abel's Jazz. Yes. And uh, <laughs> eats there all the time and uh, never had any issues. So, you know, we understand the responsibility for competing at boxing at this level, and uh, that would absolutely be absolutely be a condition for Good. a Gennady, uh, Abel, Gennady, how would a fight have went between you and Bernard Hopkins in your primes? Close. <laughs> <laughs> that, would been, that would have been a great fight in their primes. I think that uh, Gennady's power would have been the, the difference, um, but Bernard was a great champion at 160. Yeah, very interesting for me, too. Gennady, I, I, I want to say, I want to say what you did, walk in the ring with exceptionally classic, greet the fans and your long entrance. And two, I think you ranked the top five 160 pounds in your It's hard for me. Just so many great people. Mm -hmm. I can't. Well, you know, there's five or six very, very good fighters. It's hard to rank them.
because they haven't fought. Uh, I would say once Charlo fights Jacobs, if he, if that fight happens, I think that that will, that will determine one of you know a position. But there's Devrachenko, there's Jacob, there's Andre that's moving up. Uh, Murata, who's doing very well in Japan. Um, there's a lot of very good fighters, and it's difficult to. Canelo. Uh, styles make fights. <laughs> Who? <laughs> that red headed guy. Gennady, I see your knuckle. Yeah. You've worked with Gennady for the last seven years. To this day, are you amazed, or does it not surprise you the punching power that Gennady has? No, I don't know if Robert Morales is in here, but uh, when I first. Uh, I went to school with Robert Morales, was one of you guys. But uh, when I uh, first got Gennady, probably about eight months after I got him, and we did, I think, two fights by then, I sent an email to Robert telling him that I had the next great middleweight that was going to set all kind of records. And I was, you could tell, you could tell just in not only the punching power, but the, the IQ. You, you would show him something, you would uh, ask him to do something, never question anything. He would do exactly what you ask him and master it so quickly that we knew that it was going to be just a matter of time before people started to notice. Gennady, would you ever let your son be a boxer? Gennady, <laughs> 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 I see your knuckle looks kind of red. Is the, the, were your hands, my nose, your hands okay? Or? <laughs> <laughs> my nose, like that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course, I could. Kalaki, throughout your career, you've expressed a lot of um, comments about going after the belts. Um, if Canelo is not um, doing Vada, would you rather go after Pete Day Saunders to unify the division, or would you still pursue Canelo for September? Where's better for me, for my team? I check. I think I think we'll probably wrap it up now. Uh, yeah. Anybody wants to speak? Attendance was no. uh, 7,837. Uh, again, you set the record for the uh, the revenue here at Step Up Center. And uh, a fight like this just continues a Triple G legend. Adds to the, the buildup for a potential rematch or any fight that uh, Triple G is going to have next. And, and I think if he fights like this uh, in a rematch, uh, you know, there were some issues uh, that never came out uh, before the first Canelo fight. But, you know, it's, uh, it's one of those things that uh, I think the fans are in for a treat whenever uh, Triple G steps in the ring. Good. Good. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Thank you very much.